Today I will explain why you should not use a glass syringe when you do DIV ozone therapy. I'm Paula, the crazy ozone lady, and I've performed hundreds of ozone injections on myself, on my patients, and on my family. And I've developed what I think is the safest DIV method there is. I call it DIV for the super paranoid. And part of it is that you should not use a glass syringe, but only plastic syringes. And in this video, I will explain the reason for this. So my recommendation may surprise some of you, because if you looked into ozone therapy, then you certainly have found out that glass is one of the most ozone resistant materials. So it would make sense to use glass syringes instead of plastic syringes. But here is the problem with those glass syringes, and that's the plunger. You see, it does not stay put. So this makes it really, really difficult to make sure that no air enters the syringe. So let me demonstrate this. So when you fill the syringe, and most people fill syringes with ozone upside down by screwing them onto the ozone generator, which is also not part of the DAV for the super paranoid method. But most people do this. And then when you unscrew it from the ozone generator and you flip it and hold it in your hand, then it's enough that you're not careful just for a moment and that you let go of the plunger just for a brief second. And what will happen is that the plunger will slide down and in that moment air will enter the syringe. And you cannot allow this to happen. You want to avoid having air in the syringe at all costs. So this is what makes DAV relatively safe, is that you're injecting only a pure ozone oxygen mix, never air. Because air, of course, is made out of around 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. During DAV, you use pure ozone oxygen mix, never air. So using a glass syringe makes it much, much harder to make sure that you don't inject air. Now, there is a solution to this, and I've done this. I have performed DIVs on myself with glass syringes, and I've lived to tell about it. But it makes the whole process much more complicated. You need to put much more thought and care into it, and it, much, it makes it much riskier. So this is why I do not recommend people use glass syringes, especially if you're a newbie, if you're a beginner, do not do this. And especially since there is an excellent alternative to this, and that's those special ozone syringes. And those are plastic syringes. So you may think, well, hold on a second. Plastic, that's... Not, that's not good, right? Because ozone will degrade it, create contaminants. Well, no, because this syringe has been created with ozone in mind. So this is a highly ozone resistant material. So number one, the syringe itself, this thing, this is made out of a material called polycarbonate. And if you look up polycarbonate and ozone resistance, you will find out that this is a, an excellent grade A ozone resistant material. So that's number one. Number two is the plunger itself. You see this white top here? This is silicone. This is another grade A excellent ozone resistant material. So ozone will not break down the syringe. And of course the plunger stays firmly in place. So I can fill the syringe and I can actually place it somewhere else on a table, for example. And in that time, I can put on my tourniquet, I can disinfect my arm, and I can prepare all the other things and no air will enter my syringe. So this is really a great solution. The drawback of those syringes is that they're not cheap, well, compared to other regular plastic syringes. So a regular plastic syringe costs around, I think, 50 cents or less than a dollar if you buy it in bulk. And those ozone syringes, they cost around $3 a piece. But you should still invest 
in those syringes and if you use them only on yourself then you can keep reusing the same syringe if you're a professional then I recommend that you use a new syringe for each patient because as a professional as an ozone doctor and ozone therapist then you of course need to adhere to much stricter hygienic standards so since those syringes, the ozone syringes, come in sterile packaging, you can use a new syringe for a new patient. So this is another great thing about those ozone syringes. Now the plastic syringes, now many, I know that many ozone doctors still use those regular plastic syringes and, uh, and I'm going to explain why this is not a good idea. And if you see your ozone doctor do this, then you should tell him to actually switch to the ozone syringes. So those regular syringes, they're not made out of polycarbonate. They're, they're made out of a material that is called polypropylene. And if you look up polypropylene and ozone resistance, you will find out that this has only a B rating when it comes to ozone resistance. So it's not very good. And also the plunger itself, this black top, this is just regular rubber material. This is not silicone. And this will break down when it's exposed to ozone. And you can tell that if you keep reusing those regular syringes with ozone, what happens is that this black rubber will leave smears on the inside of the syringe after a while. And so this shows you that this material is easily degraded by ozone and this is not the ideal solution for ozone injections. So if you do DIV, then only use those type of syringes. They make the whole process really easy and this is just really the best, the ideal solution. So why do I call it DIV for the super paranoid? That's because it contains a total overkill of precautions for people who want to be extra, extra careful. And those precautions minimize the risk of injecting air into your vein instead of ozone and oxygen. I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Of course, none of what I said is to be misunderstood as medical advice. If you're sick, go see a doctor. Don't watch videos of a crazy woman on YouTube. Take care.